Hey, uh, Joe here. Right, we're back. Uh, today's video is going to look at tkinter, how we're going to export data. Um, what we're going to do is get to this and basically bring it out into a number of files uh, in a folder. So let's uh, have a quick look at it and take it to the code and see what it's all about. Okay, so you have a scenario where you have some data. Today we're going to just look at it in a, we're going to create it within a, a, a data item. We're going to actually create it within a dictionary. Uh, um, we've got some data here. Uh, what we're going to do is obviously first things we're going to do is show it on the screen here. Okay, so this is a tkinter GUI screen and it's just all the data here is shown up here. Okay, well say you have a program and you've brought it in from Excel or you've brought it in from an API or whatever and it's on your screen or you're running some machine learning and you've exported your data onto the screen. Now what you want to do is the next step is you want to take it from there and just say dump it all into a file. So the four files we're going to uh, dump it into, we're going to dump it into Excel, uh, export TXT, export docs and a PDF. All right, so take that, get, go to that now in a second. So the number of things we need to do, uh, as normal, we need to do some import statements. Um, the normal ones are Panda, Tkinter, we've got uh, some message boxes here, docs for Word documents, uh, FPDF for uh, PDF, um, PathLib as well for Path, and that's to do with being able to find the path on the either your local drive or if it's on a network drive, wherever it's located, wherever you're working. Okay, so as described, here is the data. And we've got a dictionary, um, we've got the name um, and the values associated with each. Okay, um, next step we're going to do is we're actually going to convert that into a data frame. And the whole idea about this is once you have it in a data frame, you're able to then start working with it, slice and dice it, and do what you want as normal. It's a very handy way if you're ever trying to. Uh, work with data, get it into a data frame if possible. Uh, you can still work with it with a, a dictionary as well and do, do what you want. But the data frame is just the look and feels a lot easier and it's easy to work with. All right. So because we're, we're trying to create a graphical user interface, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a window as usual. We're going to call it, we're going to just call it window and I'm going to say it assigned to TK to tell it to use the TK Kinter functionality. The geometry here is basically what it's going to do is going to basically uh, go and create the size of the screen. So when you look at the size of the screen here, over here, that's all it's doing. It's just creating the size, the size here, all right? And then obviously the next one is export data, which is just this value here. Um, pretty straightforward. Uh, something I try to do in every video, just to kind of standardize, do a bit of formatting on this look and feel of the output window. So, in order to um, in order to export your data, there's a couple things we need to do. Uh, obviously, there's going to be four functions. So there's going to be a function to export Excel, ex function to export to TXT, a function to export to a Word document, and then the final thing is a function to export to PDF. All right. Um, a couple of things we need to do down here um, is. Obviously, as well, we have a button. We have buttons on the screen. So for each button, so one, two, three, four, five buttons. So this first button here is very straightforward. It's associated with this here. And basically means if you click this, I'll show you, just close the window. That runs that function there. Um, and basically then we have a number of buttons here to basically um, close the Oh, sorry, we've got a number of buttons here to basically, when you click them, then they run out the scripts up here, the functions up here, do what you need to do, and then do the exports out into the files, uh, which are stored in the folder, either, as I said, on your um, network drive or your local drive, wherever you decide to put them. You could decide you want to put them out to a uh, another API somewhere else, store it in a list or file, Feed that into another API somewhere else. That's quite possible as well. You could format all these buttons as well to reform, uh, put read in, read into these functions, which will then do what you need to do. So, so a number of different ways you could actually use this 
I'm just today just trying to show a very straightforward way of actually just putting it into a file on a particular drive. So, what we'll do is we're going to look at the buttons first. So, created these buttons here, um, created a very good Excel EXP for the Excel. And basically, what this is doing is it's giving the text on the button and then basically telling it where to look with regards to function on what to do when the button is clicked. So that's that command basically there is going up to here, export Excel. We'll come up to the functions in a second, but basically going up here, running all this logic, then do what it needs to do. Same with the PDF, same with the TXT, same with the Word document. Okay. And uh, then this close screen button here is basically closing the window. Um, and what it's doing is this close screen. And there should be a. Where is it gone to? Oh my god, a bit blind. Oh yeah, yeah, as it's described. It just goes up to this function and basically shuts the screen down. Okay, that's all it does. So we have a couple more things down here. These are all related to uh, pulling the data out when you click the buttons, it basically pulls the data out, runs this class, and then basically will populate it into um, populate it into the the files. Okay? So let's go and concentrate on the functions because the functions are the areas that do actually a lot of this work. Um, so let's just look at the Excel. So the objective here is that when we're finished, we run all these Type of these different buttons, it basically will export it here. So I, at the moment, we have date date stuff 30 July here today in Dublin, Ireland, and I've already just tested this bit this morning before I created this video. But what we're going to do is when we run these, these timestamps change, and then what we'll do is actually physically open the files so I can show you actually what they are in the files and what they look like. Okay, so let's go back in here into PyCharm. So First thing we're doing is um, we do have um, so we have the file here. So when this basically when this program runs and opens up the window, it takes all this dictionary data, basically puts it into the data frame, and then shows it within the window. Okay, so that's all that those lines that's those lines create the dictionary, create the data frame, and then we basically through the code. We basically it's down here. It shows it on the T Kinter window. Okay, the GUI. All right. So that's when we look at this. We just run this actually. All right, there we go. It's basically populating the data in here. All right. That's all that's doing. So if you have, if you were doing a machine learning or you had anything else, you could actually make the screen bigger. You could put in charts in here. You could put in anything to do with Seaborn. Uh, or matplotlib as well chart them but the underlying data as well while it's not here you can still use this functionality to actually export it out to excel all right so we we'll, might just yeah okay we'll leave this we'll go down to the code so essentially what's happening is when the the, the button to export excel is clicked basically goes goes and takes the data basically exports it out here uh, basically opens this file but it basically exports it into the file and it creates the sheet that is called called analysis basically saves it and it basically closes it and then the last thing I'll put in here is a message box so let's just run this one for example okay so this is the Excel one. all right so if we look at here export it to Excel it's basically giving me a pop-up message that the code has worked it's taken the data from here and it's completed all right so what we will do is we go back here if we now look at X, excel export it's now changed to 957 so that was somewhere closer to around nine o'clock five past nine people earlier on in the video so now the file has worked um so what we'll do is we'll go down through the rest of the code and then we'll look at the file the files finding that's the last bit so the next thing is again it's pretty similar uh, same type of logic it's basically, but it's times text text file. It's basically open this file. It's basically writing the the data frame information into the file, and it's closing and it's giving us an, a, a message box. One thing to note here is that uh, in order to write it into the file, you just need to change the data that's in the data frame into a string. 
so that he will be able to written into the file. Small thing, but if you don't write it in, it will throw up an error. Next one we're going to look at is uh, we're going to create it in the Word document. Um, so the Word document uh, basically a couple of things is when we click the button export here, so if we click the button uh, here, okay. Essentially what it's going to do is it's going to create what it does is create a, a bit, bit more functionality than the first two. It's going to cr create a, a document, create a very good document that says create, open it, create a document. And then we're going to get another group word file. We're going to call that open. And this is actually what we need to do in this instance is open the text file first. And then basically what it does is it reads the text file. Okay. And then what it does is it reads the text file and it saves it in as a word document. Okay. And then the last thing it does is shows us a message box to say that has to be completed. All right, so some nice scenarios, and you'll see it then below as well in the PDF. Some scenario you might have to just create it temporarily as a text file and dump it in there and then read the text file in, um, in and save it into the Word document. In this scenario, what we have to do is do a loop um, to basically say, is look at everything, read it, every line in the text file, and then add, add those lines into the file. Uh, the, the Word document and then save it. So this is this, these two lines here, line 49 and 50, are just looping through the Word file, which is the text document. Then they're basically creating the, they're adding that information into the document here. And then we're saying the document save and save it as a Word document. That's all it's still. Well, okay. So the final thing is basically we're running, uh, got to create it, export it out to a PDF. A um, couple of things we need to do with the PDF is create a variable PDF. We need to call the, the import statement we did up above. So we're basically calling functionality with this import here. Okay, so this bit here. All right. Where are we? Let's go down a bit. Um, sorry, apologies. Let's go to, yeah. Here we are. Yeah. Um, then we're just basically at the create telling it to add a page um, onto the PDF document and then just set the fonts. And the font size, so on and forth. There, there is beef bold. So this is the main functionality for the, the PDF. Uh, what we're doing again is creating a variable called my file one, but we're telling it to look at the Excel export.txt. Okay. And then what I've done is I put in a bit of functionality here. Um, is what we're doing here is we don't want to try and run this export PDF if there's no text file um, existing. Now I didn't do it in the ones above, but just put it in here just to show it as an example. But all this is doing is it's basically checking that the text file exists, and if it exists, then use it to basically populate into the PDF. If it doesn't exist, then it does a, basically, it gives you a pop-up message, say it doesn't exist, and tell you to go off and check and look for it. And if it doesn't exist, it basically won't work in the PDF on create. Um, second thing we're doing here is also checking that if the the actual my file one exists, is there information in it? So you don't want a scenario where you have a text file and you think it's all working fine, and then basically the, the text file is empty. So if that text file is being created on the back of another process and being populated, but for some reason that didn't work and it just was empty. What this text file does is it basically, or what this piece of logic, should I say, does is checks for the size. Uh, if it's greater than zero, as in kilobytes, it will um, it will create the PDF and create the export, okay? If it's not, it basically says it's empty and it does a thing for system exit, it basically stops the process, all right? So once the, basically, these piece of logic's been run through, um, the next, Basically, thing is we're going to do is actually once all those checks are done, we're going to basically open it, um, copy it, and close it. Um, here, what we're doing is um, basically reading the contents in, and for everything again, a loop for everything in the text file, we're placing it into the PDF file. Um, okay, so essentially, you have your parameters here. You have your txt equals x. And that's x there, which is reading all the information from the text file here and then this line final line here is basically pdf output okay 
and it's basically telling it where to output it to and save it to and then the final thing is a message box which is basically say PDF export was completed um, and you should see basically in the folder which you see in a second. So we've gone through some of this, all this down here below. So taking it through the code, well, let's actually see it in action. Okay, so let's just go back here. So this is the, it's the file we created. So again, I want to, let's, because we're going to go through this. Let's just do it this way. So what we're, what we're expecting here is when this is all the code works, I'm expecting these timestamps to change here. So if we just do, so this is 957, okay? So let's just export to Excel. So as you can see, that's changed to 1004. So now that's updated. So that logic has worked. What we're gonna do is export to PDF. So it's checking for the text file exists, which is good, which we know it's there. Uh, text file is populated, which is great. And then it's basically saying the export is completed. So again, it's basically the 10, 10.04, the timestamps have changed, which is good. So we know it's worked and we know the text file is populated. Again, we're just going to do the export to TXT just to show you that logic working. Now that's gone up to 10.05 because we recreated it there. But that's absolutely fine. That's what we expect. And then the doc, so this is going to export. So this is 8.58. So what we're looking to do is export to doc. Okay. Export completed. We know that logic has worked and uh, it is 1005 timestamp. So now what we've done is we've created, we've run all the four buttons. What we're expecting to see now is when we go into each document, see this information here, all this information here, in each individual document, and then basically we should be able to validate that. So I have to bring this back on the screen. We should be able to validate that the we do know it's worked because the logic has told us it's worked. Well, should we should be able to validate that the documents have been populated properly. So I'm going to go back over here. So let's just take Excel. All right, so this is, let's just do this, okay. All right, so there's your Excel Word document. And if I go back here, that's just now. I can see date modified just now. So I can see that that's the most recent file of that. So there's all the doc, the, 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 the data within the TK into window exported out into the Excel file. So I'm just going to file close that. Okay. No. And close that. Okay. So next one we want to check is uh, let's have a look at the PDF. So let's just go open. And uh, look, you can see the timestamp there is 1004 again. So we know that works. So let's just do this. Open. Again, there's all the data there on the screen. So it's exactly in a totally formatted PDF as you would the look and feel is. Uh, and basically, this gives you all the information on the screen that um, you expect to see from the tkinter. Okay, close that. So we've looked at the Excel, look at the PDF. So let's, next one is look at the Excel exports. This is the one that's used we're validating this that exists. We're validating that there's data in it. So what we're going to do is just actually open it. Um, so what we'll do is go in here. Sorry, give me one second. And if we go into PyCharm folder, export you can data file. There's the file. Open. So there's your data. So that's the data you've seen in the Excel. You've also seen the PDF. Um, so it's again, it's worked correctly. All right, so I'm just going to exit that. And the final one we want to do is the Word doc. So again, it's, that was exported at 10.05. Okay, so let's just go, if I go here. Okay, so there's all the Word document information, all the data exported into Word. So that is a quick video on how to take the data into a TK into GUI how to create the buttons associated to export it, how to create the functions and the classes associated to populate the data into the four different files. I hope you've enjoyed that today. Really appreciate it. If you are looking at this, uh, can you give us a thumbs down or a thumbs up, should I say? <laughs> Subscribe, click the like button, please. Um, tell your friends, any, anybody who's interested in this field about this video or the, the channel. Um, 
we're doing a new video soon looking at a couple other things around this um thank you for coming today really appreciate your time for looking at this video and we'll see you soon okay